Did you know that with our technology, we have only been able to go to Neptune one time in all of history? Yeah. It might surprise you, but Neptune is so far away that even our fastest spacecraft would take more than a decade to get there. Also, without a group of astronauts set out to travel to the last planet in the solar system, they would not have enough fuel to make it back to Earth. So, what makes getting to Neptune such a daunting challenge? How long would it take us to reach this far-off planet using our cutting-edge technology? And why have we only been there once? Stick around as we unravel these intriguing mysteries. Now, as for that one and only visit to Neptune, brace yourself for this fact. In the entire span of human existence, only a solitary spacecraft, Voyager 2, had the privilege of passing close to Neptune's orbit, and that happened way back in 1989. Voyager 2 wasn't on a solo mission. It was part of the larger Voyager project, which included Voyager 1. These two space probes had a grand mission, to delve into the secrets of the outer planets, a realm that had remained shrouded in mystery until then. Their journey was all the more remarkable because they hinged on a rare celestial event occurring once every 176 years, a planetary alignment involving Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. The idea was that the Voyager exploration probes would take advantage of this unique planetary alignment to achieve speeds that could not be achieved with any fuel, using the gravity assist. The only way to travel without fuel, gravity assist is a space maneuver in which a ship uses a planet's gravity to change its speed and direction. Used in missions such as Voyager, it saves fuel and accelerates spaceships to speeds that they would never reach with conventional fuel to reach their objectives in less time. Gravity assists work like this. When a ship approaches a planet, it falls into the gravitational well generated by the planet's mass, causing it to gain speed and accelerate. If the ship doesn't change course, it will eventually fall toward the planet. But if it has thrusters that allow it to stay far enough from the planet, it will pick up speed and continue on its new trajectory. This technique allows spacecraft to explore multiple destinations in a single mission and reach greater distances in less time, but it has a downside. The disadvantage is that it only works if there are planets in your path, so you must take advantage of the moments in which they are aligned, and this does not always happen. If the Voyager ships were able to get so far, it was because they took advantage of a particular planetary alignment in which the four gas giant planets would be very close to each other. Thus, taking advantage of the gravity of the four planets, the spaceships were able to acquire the necessary speed to leave the solar system. The Voyager 1 mission took advantage of this alignment in its close flyby of Jupiter in 1979. Meanwhile, Voyager 2 embarked on a different trajectory. It harnessed the power of planetary gravity assists not once, but multiple times. First, a close flyby of Jupiter in 1979, then Saturn in 1981, followed by Uranus in 1986. Finally, in 1989, after more than a decade of venturing through the outer solar system, Voyager 2 reached Neptune. It was a historic moment, marking humanity's first ever encounter with the most distant planet in our solar system. Voyager 2 was launched in 1977 and undertook an epic journey through the outer solar system. It used gravity assistance from Jupiter and Saturn during its journey to head towards more distant planets. Along its journey, it leaned on gravitational boosts from Jupiter and Saturn to propel it further into the cosmos. When it finally approached Neptune in August 1989, it made history by becoming the sole spacecraft to explore this distant giant close-up. During its flyby of Neptune, Voyager 2 captured stunning images of the planet, its rings, and its moons. They discovered features like the Great Dark Spot, a vortex similar to Jupiter's Great Red Spot. Voyager 2 also observed raging winds in Neptune's upper atmosphere, clocking in at speeds exceeding 2,000 kilometers per hour. These findings expanded our understanding of this remote gas giant and its system, contributing significantly to our understanding of the outer planets and beyond. However, it must be remembered that Voyager 2 did not stay on Neptune, but continued to the stars. But Voyager 2 didn't linger around Neptune, it continued its journey into the starry expanse beyond. You might wonder why it didn't stay put. 
Well, it all comes down to something called breaking time. You see, in the vacuum of space, everything moves at staggering speeds. Planets, comets, and of course, spaceships. For a spacecraft to settle into orbit around a planet, it must match that planet's orbital velocity precisely. Think of it like a high-speed car race. All the cars are hurtling forward at breakneck speeds. If one were to slam on the brakes suddenly, it wouldn't just stop in its tracks. It would continue forward for quite a distance before coming to a complete halt. The same principle applies to spaceships. When they depart from Earth, they have to reach incredible speeds to overcome our planet's gravity. Each time they use a planet's gravity for a boost, they gain even more speed, making it impossible to stay in orbit around any planet. Voyager 2 had to keep going, accelerating toward the distant stars. All the planets in the solar system orbit the Sun at different speeds. Neptune has an orbital speed of 3.38 miles per second, equivalent to about 5.43 kilometers per second, or 19,550 kilometers per hour. This means that if we wanted to place a ship orbiting Neptune, it would have to reach that speed, since if it had a lower speed, it would never reach the planet in its journey around the Sun. And if it did, once the planet's force of gravity catches it, it will pull it until the spaceship crashes into the planet, because it does not have enough speed to overcome the force of gravity. Conversely, if a spacecraft moved much faster than Neptune's orbital speed, its speed would send it flying off the planet. The only way to land on the planet is by acquiring an orbital velocity similar to and exceeding the escape velocity. And this is where the big problem lies. When the Voyager 2 probe used gravity assist to increase its speed while passing close to the gas giants, it ended up reaching a speed of over 9.6 miles per second, 15.5 kilometers per second, or approximately 55,800 kilometers per hour. That is, it was three times faster than the orbital speed of Neptune. To be placed in the orbit of Neptune, the ship would have to perform a braking process with thrusters that slowed down to a third. The Voyager probes did not have the objective of landing in the orbit of any planet, so this maneuver was impossible to carry out. But if a human crewed mission of astronauts wanted to land in the orbit of Neptune, how would they do the braking process? The only way to slow down to land on Neptune is with propulsion engines, and a human crewed spacecraft is much larger than a space exploration probe, meaning they would need much more fuel. Braking is not so easy in space. Although it seems like a simple process, stopping a spaceship that is going so fast is not an easy task. In fact, it is something that has never been done in the history of space exploration. We have seen spacecraft accelerate upon entering the atmosphere of planets like Mars or Earth. Still, we have never slowed down a ship going faster than 9.6 miles per second and placed it in orbit around a planet. A spacecraft the size of Voyager 2 would need an amount of fuel equivalent to more than 10 times its weight to carry out the braking process, which would take between 1 and 2 months. Yes, just as you hear. If in a car race when braking, these continue to advance a few meters, in space, the ships continue to advance several thousand kilometers after starting to brake. The reason again is speed. To reach Neptune, the Voyager probe had to reach a very high speed. But consequently, the braking process to stay on Neptune would be very slow. Now, in the case of a human crewed spacecraft with four astronauts, this would be at least 20 times bigger and heavier than the Voyager probe. That is, it would need 20 times more fuel to brake and 20 times more time, or even more, since it is not the same to stop a space exploration probe than a human crewed spacecraft with human beings. Let's imagine that, in 120 years, when the planetary alignment of the four gas planets happens again, we launch the first human crewed spaceship bound for Neptune, with four brave astronauts on board, who will replicate the same journey that Voyager 2 took in the 80s, passing through Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and finally Neptune. Suppose the calculations are correct and take advantage of all the gravitational assists. In theory, they should reach Neptune in a period very similar to that of Voyager 2, that is, 12 years. But it may take them a little longer, since a manned spacecraft is much larger and heavier than a scanning probe. Also, astronauts cannot be subjected to massive g-forces, so they would not be able to take advantage of gravity assists as Voyager 2 did. 
If the spacecraft in which the astronauts traveled is 20 times heavier than Voyager 2, it is likely that, instead of taking 12 years, the trip will take 22 to 24 years. But even reducing the risks of being subjected to the G-forces by gravity assists, the astronauts will not be able to stay on that planet unless they break. And this is where true difficulty begins. When breaking a human-crewed spacecraft, passengers submit to the inertial force they experience from being in a deceleration process. The human body cannot withstand great forces, so the spacecraft's breaking process of carrying astronauts to Neptune will have to be very slow. How slow? Possibly it takes them between two to four years. As you just heard, it takes two to four years just to slow down, meaning that the complete journey from Earth to Neptune should take between 24 and 28 years, and that using all available resources such as propulsion rockets, special planetary alignment, gravitational assists, etc. Isn't it incredible that even taking advantage of all the resources available to humanity, it takes us almost three decades to reach the last planet in the solar system? In addition, we are talking about a trip with no return, since the fuel we are considering for this video will only be used for the braking process. Once the astronauts arrive at Neptune, they will not have the fuel to return to Earth. If we wanted to calculate a spaceship with fuel to return to Earth, the spaceship would have to be a thousand times bigger. But let's not forget that more than 90% of a spacecraft is just fuel. So the fuel needed to go from Neptune to Earth would be overwhelming, much more than all the rockets humanity launched in history have used. And you, do you think we will be able to send humans to Neptune? Or will we have to wait for space travel technology to change? Let us know your opinion in the comments.